Okay, 19.11, multiple substituents. This is the last video of the day. It's kind of an interesting one, so hopefully I can get through it without uh, fumbling too much. And no ums, it's just straight talk. All right, now the directing effects of all substituents attached to a ring must be considered in an EAS reaction. Where are we here? In an EAS reaction, I've got to consider the, all substituents, okay? So this is going to fit nicely in your head after you've understood the directing effects, okay? So this is an activator. And this is a deactivator. Right? I remember that. These were my examples, the very first two examples I used. And I want to brominate this thing. So watch this. If I brominate this, here's my methyl, here's my NO2. This is ortho to the nitro group and meta and, and, and meta to the alkyl group, okay? So this is a deactivator. It's meta directing, okay? And this is OP directing, right? So this would be meta to our OP director. And we don't want that. Oh, by the way, let me also say, whichever one's the stronger of the two wins if there's a, a dispute. So the activator wins because it's stronger than a deactivator, right? Whichever is more activating of the two wins. And that, of course, this is deactivating, so deactivator's more. It's going to go OP. Well, here's the ortho position, right, for... The alkyl group, the pair positions down here. Where am I? Where's my marker? Where's my marker? There it is. The pair positions down here it can't go there because this, this carbon already has four bonds. That would be five bonds, right? So it can't go there. Now, this is O to the alkyl group and it's meta to the nitro group. So they both get what they want. This guy says... Go meta. This guy says go ortho, right? And he is. He's an ortho to the guy who wants to go ortho, and he's meta to the guy who wants to go meta. So this is where it's going to go. All right. By the way, as a reminder, this is a weak activator, and this is a strong deactivator right but this is more activating so we I, in a, when I started this out I said which one which one one's stronger so this is more strongly activating because it's a weak activator and this is not an activator at all right okay so let's do a couple more what about this one well this is a this is an activator right and this is also an activator right this activates through what process this activates through induction this activates the resonance resonance is more prominent and so this is going to be a strong activator and this will be a weak deactivator i'm going to go to page 899 and verify that i'm looking at it right now Sure enough, the hydroxyl group is a strong activator and the methyl group is a weak activator. So this one wins, right? Where am I here? Let me go back to, yeah, so this one wins. This one wants to go OP. This one wants to go OP, right? Neither of them can go para because this is the para position for the methyl group and this is the para position for the hydroxyl, right? So it has to go ortho. Well, which ortho does it go? It either goes here. Well, it does go there. Let's just cut to the chase here. But well, this is NO2, right? It goes ortho because this is the stronger of the two. Now, practice with Skill Builder 19.2. And pause the video and practice with Skill Builder 19.2. And I think we've got another example here after that. Okay, I'm going to assume you paused it. Let's go on to the next example. 
Consider sterics in addition to resonance and induction to predict which product below is major and which is minor. Consider sterics in addition to resonance and induction. Okay, so first of all, which of these, oh, are these activators or, de or deactivators? What kind of group is this? It's an alkyl group, right? Here's another alkyl group, okay? So on the, we, we know that alkyl groups are electron donating via induction. Okay, so they're both roughly equal in their donating abilities, all right? Turns out isopropyl will be a little bit more donating, but um, what's the other factor involved here? Sterics, it's huge, right? So which of these is gonna be the major and which is gonna be the minor? Which of these is gonna be the major? Which has the steric problem? This has got a steric problem, right? Because that, that isopropyl group is huge. And this nitro group, really, oh, don't forget. It really looks like that, right? Huge. So this is a problem. Do I have percentages for that in the textbook? I don't. I don't have percentages for that in the textbook. No, nope, it just says major and minor. All right, is there another example here? Yes, okay. Let's consider, wait, yeah, let's consider this one now. Oops, this is not supposed to be here, major and minor. Pretend you don't see that. Or maybe you would be told to explain. Explain why this is the major and that's the minor. Okay, so first of all, here's ortho for both of them. Here's ortho for one and pair for the other, and here's ortho for one and pair for the other, right? So they're not fighting anymore. They both get what they want. But it turns out this nitro group is trying to not get close to that one, right? And that's why it's minor. So the, the issue would be steric hindrance. All right. Now I'm starting to say I've completely lost where I am here. I think I do have another example or two. Let's look. Oh yeah, not observed at all, right? You see that? This is not observed at all. Zero percent, Where, where's my marker? Zero percent there. All right, now go practice with skill builder 19.3.